Hi, my name is Laura Hernandez, and I am the founder of Mama Systems, and I help mamas bring peace to their homes by helping them implement customized systems so that they can have more peace-filled families and have time for the things that they enjoy. Um, one of the big things that I love to do with Mama Systems is help special needs mamas. This has been quite the journey for us. A little bit about our family. We have 10 kiddos. Three of those are adopted through foster care. And it took a while to figure out that they were actually, um, there was a lot more going on with them than we had originally thought. So they are all three um, special needs. They all three have IDD, which is intellectual and developmental delay. And with this, we have a lot of paperwork, as I'm sure you know, because you're watching this video. Um, so I wanted to just kind of break down how we keep things organized around here. And hopefully this will help in some way or capacity, maybe give you some ideas that will help free you up a little bit more. So first of all, I like to keep all paperwork. We do have different systems, different doctors, different specialists around town. All of that paperwork is on their website. However, I have found that it is best for me to keep all the actual paperwork because there's so many different facilities and so many different systems and there's not one single thing for all the different specialists to put their paperwork into. So that's why I've chosen to just do all hard copies of everything and this helps me keep track. So this is our binder for our whole family. So this is all our kiddos that are not um, our special needs buddies. And in here, everybody just has a simple page protector or we've slid all of their information in. Um, so when they have a doctor's appointment or normally it's just a doctor's appointment or anything of importance, it'll go in here. And then I have one little guy who has had a few more evaluations than the rest of them, um, just with some different learning disabilities and things like that. So he has a, a bigger folder in here where I can slide all of his information. Now, I need to tell you that I do not keep a lot of the things that the doctor sent home. I normally tear off a good majority of it and just keep the pages that pertain to that visit. So their height, their weight, their why they were in there, um, any immunizations or anything like that that I need copies for, I keep that. Everything else, like the, what your child should be doing or all the different growth, growth charts and everything, I just throw all of that away so that I'm not keeping frivolous things because I don't need 18 different ways of showing how they're growing. It's just not something I need. These guys are for um, our special needs buddies and I have a binder for each of them. So all three of these, it's a lot of paperwork. We started out with binders when they were in foster care. And just it's the best way to keep track of all of the paperwork. And so, it just kind of morphed into this organizing everything for them in one spot. And it has been so helpful to have all of that paperwork from all the different specialists, all the different evaluations, all in one space. So I thought I'd take a minute and just go over Hannah's binder with you and show you kind of how we have it organized. When I get paperwork from the school, like this is her current IEP or a new evaluation or new doctor's visits or new diagnosis or whatever, whatever the, the flavor of the day is, um, it all goes, I'll just set it in here. And then once a year, I'll go through and I'll hole punch it all and then file it correctly in the folder. So at the very front of the folder, I have a kind of a cheat sheet that I've made. Um, her stuff definitely needs to be up to date, but it has on here just some important things of like when she was born, I clearly was not there for their birth. Um, and so different things like the APGAR score, what week they were born, different things like that, that I don't have in my memory. Um, I have all that written down and then any dates of surgeries, any dates of diagnosis are all quick, easy reference guide right here. And I also keep a copy of this in my OneDrive. So that way, if I am at the doctor and don't have the reminder, I can just quickly pull that up and reference those important dates. So the first section I have here is medical. And there's a little bit on my front page, I have a little bit more in detail Cliff Notes version of all her medical, and I'll go update that whenever anything big happens. But 
it's a little more in depth than this little cheat sheet right here. Um, and then any pages that I get from the doctor or from any diagnosis, I'll just put in the front. And so that way everything stays in chronological order, working forwards to backwards. Um, and I'll kind of know where things are. The next thing I have for her are all of her school, like anything education wise, all of her IEPs, all of her documents from any ARDS we've had, any evaluations she's had from school. This is all her FIEs, all of those things are all in here. Then I have other evaluations. So therapy evaluations, neuropsych evaluations, any kind of evaluation that we've ever received for her was in this section right here. Then I also have in here um, previous from before she came to us, different monthly reviews that I found were important from her previous foster mama, like when she started crawling, when she started walking, all those little things are all tucked away in here. And then finally, I have all of the documents from LifePath, which is our local DSHS office. So I have in here her evaluations. I have any wait list that she's currently on, any qualifications that she has for certain services. Everything that's specific to her with LifePath is in this section right here. Um, I do not keep there's many different aspects to the services that we get. So any paperwork describing what the programs are, what the waiver programs are, is all in another binder. And like timesheets and any other forms that we have to fill out on a weekly or monthly or bi-weekly basis are all in a different binder. So I'll go over that too in a second. But just specific Hannah is in Hannah's binder. So that is her binder. And have a smaller guy, a little bit smaller. This one is for all of the paperwork that, again, I just throw it in here until I have my date where I pull punch and slide it all in. And I kind of make that a thing. I know that I need to do it. And so I'll schedule it on the calendar. I'll pour myself a glass of wine, play some good music or turn on the office or something kind of, you know, just easy. And work on filing it away. So this binder is simply for the programs and kind of the in-depth details of them, any information on different programs that they may qualify for later, um, or the ins and outs of paying people or, you know, that big stack of paperwork that you get when you start signing up for services. That all goes in here. I seldom, seldom reference this. That's why I just have this tucked away somewhere else and don't even worry about it. Now this binder, is the one that I keep for our weekly, bi-weekly payroll, things that need to be sent in on a regular basis, all those forms and all of those things. So the first section here is all about our adoption agency. They provide respite care for us. And so we have different forms for that. We have a request and then a receipt form that have to be turned in on a monthly basis. And also any counseling or anything like that that the kiddos have is all taken care of through these guys. So all of that paperwork goes in here. And I don't specify, I don't specify children in this binder. This is kind of a, it's a big picture. Like there's special needs kiddos. We have four or five programs that we um, work with that need paperwork on an at least monthly basis. And so I found that this is the best way to keep track of it all. So all health stuff goes in here. This is all specific, child specific. In this binder, it's program specific. That's how it's filed. Um, so I have all our rest of the stuff in this folder. This guy right here is for our, our weekly help that we get. Um, so each kid gets about 30 hours a week and it makes it a little crazy because we have, so it's about 90 hours that you have to account for and um, pay out to different people. We have four different employees and each employee has a set number of hours that go on set number of days and cannot cross over between children and hours and all of that. So it felt like a full-time job before I came up with this system. So I'm really hopeful that this helps somebody out there who's got a lot of special needs little buddies 
and a lot of paperwork to keep track of. Um, I have just have set hours for each employee. And so with that, I've made sheets with those set hours, had them sign, had everything filled out exactly how it needs to be filled out, and then make copies of that. That way, when it comes to payday, and I'm supposed to turn in the timesheets, all I have to do is go in and fill in the dates for these. I've had a kid lay them all out for me and correlate them all. So every paper clipped section has a timesheet for each employee and has all of the timesheets that I need to turn in for that week. So all I have to do is write the pay date or the pay period and then go down and write the dates. And it has saved so much time. The calculations and making sure I'm just doing it right was so stressful. So now all I have to do is make sure I did it right once and then just get the dates right. I can handle dates. I can do that. Um, next up, we have our respite care through our county. And this paperwork is a little more, I just have it organized by forms because it's very specific to the time when we have respite. It's all about the details of what they did together and the dates and where they were and the times and all that. So these are not pre-filled, sadly, but they're just organized in here. And finally, we have our Medicaid ride set up. Um, if you do not know this already, Medicaid, so our buddies have Medicaid because they were adopted out of foster care, but I also know that um, there's medical qualifications for Medicaid. So maybe a lot of you guys have Medicaid for that reason. This has helped me so much. So Medicaid ride set up. You do not actually have to have somebody come pick up your child and take them. You can have someone that you hire go take them, have them be a qualified driver, and they get reimbursed for it. And or they can reimburse you, which just helps with gas money. Um, so I called and made a set up an account with them and got a number. And we have a good 20 appointments a week at our house. So it's a lot of driving. And so I've delegated that out to someone else. But this just really helps with the gas money. Um, to and from the appointments. So on here, I have the Medicaid ride set up. I have their Medicaid IDs. I have all the doctors and therapy people that we go to on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis. All of our, our most valuable players here are all written out with their addresses and their phone numbers and have it laminated and I have it in here so it's easy to access when I need to set up rides. And then I also have a little folder here for where I can put the, when you call to set it up, they'll send you a sheet of paper with all of the appointments that you have. And then you take it to the appointment and sign it, get it signed by them. Um, so all of those papers go in here as well. I think that's it. I really hope that that frees you up a little bit. Hopefully you've learned something that can help you. Um, if you have any questions or need help bouncing out around any ideas or organization of your things, I would love to help you with that. It is my heart and my passion I mean, I get super geeked out by this because I feel like I've, it took me years to get here where things were organized and didn't feel so overwhelming. And so now I just want to spread the love and share everything that I've learned. So I hope this helps you. I hope you have a great day. Hey, as you're navigating all of these things, if you feel overwhelmed and feel like you just need a little bit more support, that is truly why I started this business and I would love to help you. It would be such a joy for me and an honor for me to help you figure out any systems, any services, um, any programs that you think you might qualify for. Maybe you think there's a little bit more that you qualify for and you're not just not sure how to get it. I would love to help walk that road with you. So feel free to visit my website and I would love to help you out.